Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. First thing first, next week's video will be our monthly Q&A. So, please post your questions related to martial art, Xiu Dao and Chinese culture in the comment section or on the Ask Dao Yi channel in the Dao Yi Discord or email me if you prefer to be anonymous. About two years ago, I started a series titled Decoding Martial Proverbs. A martial proverb is a concise expression of a martial art knowledge. Very often, it requires explanation or else it might be taken merely at face value and its real value would be lost. Even worse, misperceptions are almost certain to occur. So far, I have introduced many martial proverbs in the 11 videos in that series. Link to that series playlist is in the description. Today, I will resume this series and introduce more martial proverbs every so often. So, today's video will be the 12th episode of this series, which will introduce two important martial proverbs. First, Xiong Kai Bei He, Bei Kai Xiong He, Dang Kai Zu He, Zu Kai Dang He, and the second, Tai Tui Cheng Kua, Shang Bu Bu Chou. But first, let's get high on tea. Today's tea is Xin Yang Mao Jian, one of the top 10 teas in China. Xin Yang is a city in Henan province. Mao means hair, meaning the fuzzy hair or trichrome on the tea leaf. Jian means sharp, indicating the shape of a tea bud. So, Xin Yang Mao Jian means green tea made with tea buds with a fuzzy hair produced in the Xinyang area. It is worth noting that Henan is located in central China, but the majority of areas of this province belong to northern China, while only a small area belongs to southern China. Xinyang is one of the small southern areas of this province. So, the environmental condition of a Xinyang, a southern territory, is different from the rest of a Henan province and this area is perfect for growing tea plants. Even though Henan, especially the Xinyang area, has the long history of tea growing and cultivation. The name Xinyang Mao Jian, a specific tea leaf processed with a specific method, was developed only at the beginning of the last century. Tea producers borrowed the Longjing tea processing method and then modified the process on the locally produced tea leaves to produce the Xinyang Mao Jian, which became a famous tea in China. The best time to pick tea leaves to produce top quality Xinyang Mao Jian is in the early spring. The picking time and the tea leaf shape are the most important factors to rank the quality of Xinyang Mao Jian. For example, the top ranked leaf is one bud with one nearly bloomed leaf the quality gradually decreasing with the increase in size of the tea leaf. So, the rank will be lower and lower as the leaves get bigger and bigger. So, tea farmers have to balance the size of the tea leaves and the overall quantity of tea leaves picked per year. Tea leaves picked very early on will lead to great quality, but low quantity and the exact opposite for tea leaves picked later on. Compared to other green teas, Xinyang Mao Jian has a strong yet delicious green tea flavor due to its chemical components. The ratio between 
polyphenols and the theanine is uh, perfect, imparting a balanced, strong, and fresh flavor to Xinyang Maojian. Xinyang Maojian is best brewed with water at uh, 85 to 90 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds. Normally, 50 ml of water surface for 1 gram of tea leaves, so usually 3 grams of tea is good for 150 ml of water. For subsequent brews, lower water temperature should be used, typically for a maximum of 3 to 5 brews. Xinyang Maojian provides health benefits typically to green teas, but people drink it mostly for its flavor. For now, I only have a small quantity of Xinyang Maojian given by my students Le Hang Marine, but a large quantity of Xinyang Maojian is on the way here. This is the tea leaf. A very nice shape indeed. This is the tea decoction. Nice green tea color with fresh flavor. Do let me know your experiences with Xinyang Maojian in the comments section. Again, if you are looking for a nice green tea with a strong yet delicious and fresh flavor, Xinyang Maojian is a great option. With that, let's decode two martial proverbs today. Topics covered in today's video include first proverb, Xiong Kai Bei Ke, Bei Kai Xiong He, Dang Kai Zu He, Zu Kai Dang He. Second proverb, Tai Tui Chen Kua, Shang Bu Bu Chou. Third, demonstration, and the fourth, take away. So, Without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1. First proverb. Let's break down this proverb first. Xiong means chest, kai means open or extend, bei means back, he means close or move inward, dang means crouch. Especially the inside of the adductors area in martial art practice. Zu means feet. Put together, the proverb translates to when the chest extends, the back moves inward. When the back extends, then the chest moves inward. When the crouch area pushes outward, the feet have a contracting motion. When the feet extend, the crotch area contracts. End translation. This sounds very easy to understand. However, in practice, some misunderstanding would definitely happen if someone just follows intuition. This proverb consists of two parts. The first part talks about the requirement of forward and backward coordination between the chest and the back. The second part talks about the requirement of inward and outward coordination between the feet and the crotch area. Let me explain both parts of the proverb one by one. First part, Xiong Kai Bei He. Bei Kai Xiong He talks about the chest and the back movement. Recall the term Kai He, one important concept which can be used to describe the chest and the back movement. I have introduced Kai He in a prior video titled Internal Style Concepts 23 Kai He, Opening and Closing. Long story short, the martial power of the upper body can be strengthened by the inward and outward movement of the chest and the back. In other words, the power of the upper body is not only generated by the power 
tried the food from the lower back, but more importantly, it is also generated by the opening and closing movement of the chest and the back. In practice, the power of the upper body is more often mainly generated by the opening and closing movement of the chest and back. Very often, people overemphasize the importance of the lower back in power generation. Actually, power generated by the lower back movement first and then transferred to the upper back or arms is much slower than what is generated by the forward and the backward movement of the chest and the back. And the even more interesting fact is that it may be difficult to generate power from the lower back in some situations. For example, when a practitioner executes a power release movement while walking, the reason is simple. While walking, the body is supported by one leg. So, it's very challenging, if not impossible, for the waving motion of the lower back to transfer the power to the upper back and then to the arms. In martial practice, the concept of following the natural way also means taking advantage of the body structure and its natural function. So, simultaneously turning the lower back and executing forward and backward movement with the chest and the back is a much more natural approach. As a result of which, your martial movement will be more effective and efficient in terms of power generation in a dynamic state. So, the first part of this proverb emphasizes the importance of the horizontal motion of the chest. It can also be expressed by the inward and outward chest and back movement in a more obvious way. To improve the efficiency of this movement, the coordination between the chest and the back is the key factor. In general, considering the chest and the back, the part that extends is the main factor responsible for the power generation and the part that contracts is the outcome of the extending part. It is worth noting that the opening and the closing movement of the chest and the back is not limited to a horizontal movement. Opening and closing can also be applied to diagonal movements, which will generate another type of power, for example, a twisting power. So, it will be helpful to have the diagonal motion with an opening and closing movement simultaneously in order to generate a powerful twisting force. It is an advanced practice and requires more effort to master. Now, let's move on to the second part of this proverb. The second part of this proverb talks about the inward and outward motion of the feet and the crotch area. Before going forward, I'd like to clarify the meaning of the term crotch area. The dictionary meaning of the word crotch is typically the perineum area. However, in martial art practice, the crotch area does not mean the perineum area only but also include the inner upper sign areas. And the inner upper sign area is more important than the perineum area. So for the rest of this video, any mention of a crush area would actually mean the whole area including the perineum area plus the inner upper thigh areas. Now, the second part of this proverb 
当开组合，组开当合。Indicates that when maintaining a strong stance, the crotch area and the feet should coordinate. Meaning that when the crotch area contracts, the feet extend outward, and vice versa. This is an important principle in dealing with the extending and the contracting motion between these two areas. Also, compared to the coordination between the chest and the back in a forward and the backward movement, the opposite motion between the crotch area and the feet emphasizes the inward and outward movement of the. Upper of the area between hips to feet in a sideways direction. So the body structure has the forward and the backward movement on the upper body, with an inward and outward body motion on the lower body. These two parts of opposite directions of forces applied to both the. Upper and the lower parts of the body ensure a strong structure and the power, which is an important martial power foundation. These opposing power directions are created by the body structure, which should be respected in order to maximize martial power generation. Any martial power is stronger. One, it is created in a three-dimensional way, which is an important body mechanism in the internal style practice. When analyzing martial movements in the internal style practice, we can notice that most of the movements ultimately aim to create a three-dimensional movement in order to generate the expected martial power. So, the second part of the proverb indicates that to have a strong stance, especially in a dynamic state, for example, a walking movement, these two parts should coordinate with each other. This concept can be applied easier in Tai Chi practice, but is more challenging for the other two internal styles. Regardless. This principle should be applied in all three internal styles. Furthermore, it is very important to understand the function of the knees in this practice, since the crotch area and the feet maintain the inward and outward strength in a simultaneously contracting and expanding motion. The strength. Created and maintained by the knees becomes a key factor. So, what is the principle of a knee practice here? Well, the knees should still maintain a strong forward motion, while muscles and the ligaments around the knee areas should have a slight twisting motion. In other words, the bone structure of the knees. Maintain a inward motion, but muscles and ligaments follow the crotch and feet motions. It is a very advanced topic, which is beyond the scope of today's video. I will talk about it in the future. To summarize, this proverb emphasizes the importance between the upper body and the lower body. While maintaining a solid structure, while also being able to generate a powerful martial power, which is necessary for martial combat and self-defense. Now let's move on to the second proverb. Topic two, second proverb: Tai Tui Cheng Hua, Shang Bu Bu Chou. Let's break this proverb down. Tai means to lift up, Tui means leg, Chen means to think, Kua means hips, Shang means forward, Bu means stepping, Bu means 
without and cho means to withdraw. Put together, it translates to well, lifting one leg up, the hip of uh, the other leg should sink. While stepping forward, the front leg should not withdraw. End translation. Again, it sounds very simple, but requires further explanation in order to fully understand it. Also, bear in mind that even though this proverb is applied mainly in Tai Chi practice, it can also be applied to the other internal styles. The only difference is that it is a more obvious approach in Tai Chi practice well, it's a lot subtler in Xing Yi and Ba Gua practice. This proverb consists of two parts. The first part emphasizes the movement of the other hip while one foot steps forward. The second part emphasizes the requirement of the knee of the supporting leg while the back foot steps forward. Together, the whole proverb explains the principle used in martial art stepping, especially in Tai Chi practice. Now, let me explain it part by part. The first part, Tai Tui Chen Kua, translation, where lifting up one leg, the hip of the other leg should sink downward. End translation. I have briefly introduced the same concept in some prior Tai Chi videos. For example, the video titled Tai Chi Stepping Like a Kite explained the same concept with the demonstration. Link is in the description. Now, I'd like to introduce another important aspect used in applying this proverb. In Tai Chi practice, there are many places that need to shift the weight between the two legs. Actually, this proverb can be and should be applied in weight shifting as well. In other words, stepping is the extreme action of weight shifting, and weight shifting is a subtle stepping without the feet leaving the ground. So, please pay attention to weight shifting movements in Tai Chi practice and uh, apply this principle in all such movements. A common mistake is that while shifting weight from one leg to another, the body may be left upward instead of sinking downward, which should be corrected by applying this principle. Now, let me illustrate it by demonstrating a Tai Chi movement. Okay, this is the wrong method. Okay, so for example, this posture. So that's wrong method. This is the right method. Now, let's talk about the second part of this proverb. Shang Bu Bu Chou Translation While stepping forward, the front leg will not withdraw. End translation. This is just a literal translation. So, what is the meaning of the front leg will not withdraw? Let me explain. Very often, when stepping forward, especially in Tai Chi practice, some people withdraw the weight of the front leg backward while the back leg steps forward. Some people may not withdraw the front leg's weight backward, but the supporting leg of the front leg becomes less strong when the back leg steps forward. If you don't see what I mean yet, please pause this video and try to step forward while paying attention to the strength of the front leg. You may experience the same mistake I described it here. So, maintaining the strength of the supporting leg while the back leg steps forward is a key practice in Tai Chi. Now, the question becomes, how to maintain the strength of the supporting leg or the front leg? 
Well, you should keep the knee aligned in the same direction as the front foot and not soften the strength of the muscles around the front knee area. Again, if you have a hard time visualizing the movement, please pause this video and give it a try. Just pay attention to the strength and the angle of your front knee, and you will realize the importance of this proverb. Also, as the first part of, it, of this proverb says, it can be applied in a weight shifting movement, which was explained in the first part of this proverb. Now, let me illustrate this part of the proverb by demonstrating a Tai Chi movement. Then, this is the wrong method. For example, when we keep this posture, then we go forward. Now, this is the right method. By the way, I only demonstrated a couple of Tai Chi movements in order to physically illustrate this proverb, since the Tai Chi movement in handling this proverb is very obvious. Also, I have many Qingyi and Bagua demonstrations as well on this channel. Even though the application of this proverb to Xingyi and the Bagua movements is uh, very subtle, you can still identify it by carefully observing my demonstration video. I hope you will pay attention to this aspect when watching my videos in the future. In learning martial art, critically observing a good demo and learning from it is an essential skill. To summarize, Managing the weight shifting practice in the internal style of martial art not only helps to stabilize your stepping, but also helps to maximize power generation. As explained in the first proverb of this video. So, both proverbs introduced in this video emphasize different aspects. The first proverb emphasizes the importance of power generation through opening and closing movements, while the second proverb emphasizes the importance of correct weight shifting and forward stepping. Eventually, your practice should integrate both proverbs as one. To reach this level, a practitioner should practice each movement according to each principle separately and eventually internalize them. So, it's uh, important to first know these detailed requirements and then apply them to practice. That is how these proverbs should be applied in practice. Now, let me demonstrate an exercise which reflects both of today's proverbs in action in the next topic. Topic 3. Demonstration I'd like to demonstrate a Tai Chi movement that illustrates these two proverbs. The name of the movement is Yan Shou Gong Chui. By the way, the pronunciation of the third character of this movement name is Gong. Sometimes it is written using some other characters and pronounced Hong instead of Gong. So, in the future, if you see either Yan Shou Gong Chui or Yan Shou Hong Chui, know that they both mean the same movement. Topic 4. Takeaways In today's video, we discussed on 
two interesting proverb. First proverb: 胸开背合，背开胸合，当开足合，足开当合。The proverb translates to: When the chest extends, the back moves inward. When the back extends, then the chest moves inward. When the crotch area pushes outward, the feet have a contracting motion. When the feet extend, the crotch area contracts. This proverb is used to describe the power generation mechanism of the chest and the back, and the coordination between crotch area with the feet. A key aspect for maintaining a strong and solid stance. <coughs> Second proverb: 抬腿成胯，上步不抽。While stepping forward, the front leg will not withdraw. The proverb emphasizes and explains the importance of the weight shifting method in stepping. Do check out the demonstration section to have a better idea of how to apply these two proverbs into practice. Quick reminder to post your questions for next week's Q&A section. Thanks for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.